Jason, how's it going? It's going good. Um, been here most of the day, all the day, mm -hmm. and uh, it's been great. The fans are great. San Diego's great. I haven't been here in a couple years, mm -hmm. um, but I was doing some promotions for Lionsgate and Saban Entertainment and Boom and all that stuff, so it's been exciting. Okay, definitely. Yeah. And so you've been here this entire time for these past couple of days, pretty much, right? here. Yeah. And for those at home who don't know, this is San Diego Comic-Con we're talking about, yeah. too. San Diego Comic-Con, the mega, the con, <laughs> the big one. And not only uh, San Diego Comic-Con is inside the convention halls, it's everywhere on the streets. you got mm -hmm. celebrities running everywhere. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's, it's the big one. Definitely. Now, for fans out there who don't know who you are, which yeah. some of my fans may not, yeah. but I'm going to make sure that they do, okay. because you, sir, are something else. Oh. Oh, You've been you. around a long time. I'm just saying you start when you're five, so yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I'm kidding. But yeah. for those who don't know, I mean, we're talking about the Power Rangers. We're yep. talking about you're both the Green and the White Ranger. Yep. Explain a little bit more about that. Well, uh, for you all that don't know, my name is Jason <laughs> David Frank. I played a character named Tommy, and we didn't have a last name until a little bit later, so then I got Tommy Oliver. I was the original Green Ranger, original White Ranger, and then went to Zeo Red, uh, and then Turbo. I went to Turbo Red, and then I was... Uh, Doctor and Doctor Oliver mm -hmm. and uh, Dino Thunder, and now with the Boom Comic Books, um, got another character under my belt, which is Lord Draken, which is uh, from a different dimension. So that's uh, that's quite a few, quite a few Rangers over the last 25 years. So. And that's pretty good for most people out there having a career 25 years and continue to count. Yeah. That's something else because not yeah. everyone can say that. You know, it's great. I I like to say that the fans have this this wow factor i tell my guys at my karate school at rising sun to have the to, to wow the parents and so when parents leave and they're like good job i tell my instructors you got to work harder i want the parents to leave and go wow he cleaned his room wow she did the dishes you know what i mean and it's one of those things where the fans in the last six years the more i'm out there and the more i meet them and the more they know me they walk away and they're like oh you're jason david frank oh green ranger oh oh jason david frank oh man you know so they have that wow factor and that's what i love about it they're really excited and and it's just now begun there's so, so many things coming out in the, in the horizon for us and it's not just the fans who know you as this power ranger these yeah. are the fans who are also those mma yeah. huge huge fans explain a little bit more about what that is well, I've done karate since the age of four. Um, you know, I was a black belt way before I started Power Rangers. Actually, a third degree black belt before I started Tommy. That's what got me as in in Power Rangers was my audition. You know, mm -hmm. I pretty much uh, did did a martial arts kata routine, and they were like, "Cool, you're hired." <laughs> um, you know, and then I started doing mixed martial arts. Um, you know, big fan base with fighters and uh, martial art masters around the world. So. You know, I'm, I'm, my, my heart is in martial arts, and that's what got me the start. Also, it's given me the discipline, the work ethics to come out here and be here until clo closing time. You know, uh, have the tolerance and the patience and, and just the, uh, I think, the the excitement and the appreciation for people. Because when I was a belt for one, one, be one belt for many, many years, I would get another belt, and I'd be like, ah, oh, I appreciate be in the white belt, not the belt I am now. I appreciated what it took me from that point to get to the next belt. Mm -hmm. you know? And also, I think you also send that message to a lot of people, especially with your, your school that you've created, yeah. too, and all of that. Yep. Explain a little bit more about that. Well, um, started an organization called Rising Sun Karate. Actually, it's going to be the 20th year anniversary coming up, yes. and uh, which is great. So, um, you know, I train kids from the ages of two all the way up. And, uh, you know, at my school, it takes about six years to reach a level of black belt. We don't charge any testing fees or anything like that, which is important to me. I, I had to pay testing fees, but my dad would, once in a while, my dad would wonder, oh, I wonder if rent's due. So <laughs> at my school, I don't charge testing fees. I want the kids to know that they earn it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? That they have to earn things. Um, if kids are in school and if the teacher said, oh, we're just going to give everyone an A and everyone just try the best, no one's going to try. So, you know, we have to have winners and people that don't win. Notice I didn't say losers, but we have to let them understand, hey, we didn't come first today, but next time you will. So they can strive harder instead of, you know, you play baseball and then on the coach says, well, everyone wins. Nobody learns anything by mm -hmm. that. You got to learn sometimes not just the, you know, the, the losing aspect that you're not a loser. You're still a winner, but it gives you that drive to be better next time. You know, and people need to learn that. And this particular this particular school just happens to be exactly where again? Oh, uh, we have uh, I got a school in California, Rising mm -hmm. Sun Karate. Got an affiliate school with my instructor out there in New Jersey and Tom's mm -hmm. River, and then uh, Tascacita, which is uh, Texas, mm -hmm. and then uh, Paraland, Texas, is where we have them. So. Yes, I just mentioned that because I'm in Houston, as everybody yes, knows that. Yes, so so uh, just got to throw out that. Texas, Houston, yeah, Texas. Yeah, just got to throw that in, people. Yes. Just saying. So, yep. but also I think there's something very important when it comes to your school, especially the way in which it kind of started because you were inspired 
by something of a heavenly force, I should say, yeah. that also continues to inspire you, inspire you every single day in everything yeah. that you do. Tell yeah. me more about that, because I think that's really important. Yeah, um, well, I mean, I, I try to be really positive with people. I try to live a positive life. It's not always that way. Um, you know, and uh, like I said, I'm, I'm a believer in, in Christ, but I also know that uh, karma is a big thing. And treating people, and, and you know, like here at Comic-Cons, for example, I count my blessings. Some of the stuff I don't even do, I don't care about money, I count my blessings when people walk away from the table. So when my kids come into the karate school, you know, I have to teach them, first of all, that, you know, to protect themselves, but at the same time appreciate who they are and who they are as a human being. And um, everyone's special, you know what I mean? That's the most important thing, that everyone's equal. It's not just about being an actor, it's not about who you are and what you do. And that's the LA vibe here, is that we have, is always, I talk to someone and they're like, oh great, and what do you do? But it really doesn't matter what I do, you should just talk to me anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, so I teach my kids to be humble, um, and appreciate who they are and you know I mean I, like I said I'm a big believer and uh, God's blessed me around the world and uh, you know I don't it, I'm not preaching to anyone it's more of a relationship mm -hmm. and when you get to know them it's not about being perfect it's about progression yeah. and people understand that it's it's a progression it's a you know if someone looks at you and says you know this ain't the guy that I used to know five years ago that means you're progressing, mm -hmm. you know? And especially in a good way, like, wow, you don't do this. I mean, I haven't drank in six years, I used to. It's just one of those things where I just cut it out. I just don't need it. I'm always working out here. Um, I got fans that look up to me around the world. To me, they're all kids still, even though they're older. I gotta be the role model. I wanna be that superhero that maybe they saw as a kid and now today they see that superhero in me, mm -hmm. Jason David Frank, not in the Green Ranger. Yeah. You know? I, I also get this impression that it, it really has helped you, the, the spirit that's in your hearts, yeah. um, especially what, what happened in Phoenix as well. Yeah. Do, can yeah. you explain a little bit more about how that kind of helped to ground you, especially in such yeah. a serious situation? Yeah. Um, well, in Phoenix Comic Con, we did have an incident where someone did come into the Comic Con to try to kill me. Um, you know, I was doing, I was doing the Comic Con. Uh, you know, I heard about it, but man, it's like one of those things where you know God protects me, and I knew God was there. I knew, you know, maybe my mom was there to protect me, and it was one of those things where you have to understand. I think in this world that we have, um, you know, we have. Instagram people and social media people that might influence them in a certain way because this particular case uh, it seems like the guy was influenced from a different side of, of the world and maybe believe in things that aren't true um, so he kind of built a thing in his head that he stabbed me which he didn't but I was peaceful I had a press interview people were saying how's it going my family was devastated and you know crying all that stuff and I just knew that when I was at Comic Cons, and I'm still at Comic Cons, but I knew God put me there for a reason. And I would talk about something's gonna happen. And you know, I didn't want to say, but God put this on me because He knows I can handle it. And I have the social media power to, you know, try to main, mandate more Comic Con safety for other shows to protect other people. It's not about me, but to protect the kids and the families and everyone out there to make Comic Cons a safe place. Because as you see, we have, you know, comic characters all over. So sometimes it, you drop the guard. You know, you feel so comfortable, even even cops mm -hmm. feel so comfortable to look at a superhero and drop the guard. And um, it's unfortunate, but in this world, sometimes you still got to have a little bit of a guard up, especially with the kids. When I teach martial arts, you know, we used to teach something, which uh, my wife was just telling me the other day. We used to teach something, stranger danger and how you want a piece of candy. Well, that's not what it is anymore. Yeah. What it is now is people that know you are the ones that hurt you. So we tell kids of teachers or anything, you feel uncomfortable and you feel that un uneasy spirit in your heart, as a kid, you need to tell someone. Mm -hmm. And so it like 80%, 90% of the kids that are being hurt or abducted are from people they know. No yeah. longer from, hey, do you want a piece of candy? That's old school, you know? Yeah. So we'll try to teach the kids a little bit more that it's unfortunate that the people that you know are the ones that are gonna hurt you. It's different, you know, yeah. but um, I felt peaceful overall and I know things are going to change. It doesn't scare me to be out here. It's just um, I'm just glad it happened to me and someone else because I'm mentally strong and I have like the power to kind of do something about it. And that's what I'm trying to do. And you are already forgiven him for it, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, totally forgiven him. And that's what I was I was talking to my wife and everyone's like, you know, that's good. You have that in you to forgive. It's like I forgive him, you know, and I, I, I do want to talk to him and make him better and make him understand that, hey, no matter if you heard things from the other side, I'm here mm -hmm. on the end of the day, and I'm 
I'm here for you. I'm still rooting for you to feel better and, and, and you know, just feel better mentally. And um, that's people don't get that. Most people say, you know, if you want to talk to him, what would you say? I would say, that, not me. I would want to see, you know, if he's better and, you know, pray, pray for him. I don't know. But I have forgiven him. That's wonderful. One other final question, yes. because this is a show that talks about giving back. Yeah. And you give back so much out there. What do you think is one of the biggest things that you do that that you hope gets across to others when it comes to giving back? And, and the charity you feel most passionate yeah. about giving back to? Um, well, I think in general, I mean, I do a lot of different stuff. I, I, I'm loyal to my church, Pastor Keenan. I'm loyal. I'm loyal. It, it's, it's to the point where back in the days it was a car payment and it was church. That's just the way it was. We just gave like it was a payment to God because we know how important it is to give. Um, so my charity for me is people because sometimes like individuals or, or dividing things is hard. You have to understand I meet thousands of people a day and everyone needs help, including myself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we give to them, I, I feel like I'm depositing in their emotional bank account. And it's nothing else. They can come up here and do free stuff, free pictures, but I'm depositing their emotional bank account by saying, how are you today? How are you feeling today? Listening to their stories. And um, my pastor showed me one thing. When I shake hands with people, I'm not in a rush. Even though I got a thousand people behind and people want to come, I'm not in a rush. My yeah. pastor never, you know, Pastor Keenan never rushes me. He takes the time and he looks at you and he feels you. So that's kind of what I do to people. And I feel like if you deposit in their mental bank account, mm -hmm. you don't, you don't need anything back. And, you know, and, and, and be, if you do have a favor, you can cash the favor in your head. Because yes. I could say I did a favor, give me a favor. And But when you're broke in your emotional bank account by all your friends that are give me, give me, give me, give me, and not give, your thought will bankrupt. You know, your, your giving will bankrupt. And uh, it's just one of those things like today I saw all the Gotham people. Um, uh, Robin is, uh, you know, he plays the penguin, and yes. I didn't know they were all over there. But it was just my, I'm gonna buy dinner for those guys. Those guys have <laughs> money; they can buy dinner. But it was, it was great because when I bought dinner for him, I felt good. I went up to him, say, "Hey, you know, I, I got you." No, 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 you don't have to do that. So it was one of those things that made me feel good to do that, to make him think. And, and most people, you just take from actors. Hey, mm -hmm. how you doing? It's good to see you. Can I take a photo? Oh, the whole cast is here. I didn't know the whole cast was there. But they were, so I took a picture, and I was like, "Hey!" And they're like, "Oh!" I was like, "No, no! I just want to—I don't want nothing from you. I just want to say thank you guys for what you do, and thanks because they were fans of mine as well." And um, Robin was, and I wanted to see his work. Incredible actors, and they were shocked. You know, most people don't do that, but like Chick Fil A in Texas, they always do that. You yes, go up, someone behind you buys your meal, you pull up to the window. You know, Chick Fil A's ran—you know—it's a Christian Christian company, and. They buy your food and you're like, who bought my food? And then you got to repay it back because it's karma. I just mm -hmm. do. I buy the guy behind me, you know, and it's uh, the guy behind me has eight kids. No, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. But, uh, you know, things come back to you when you're in the Chick-fil-A yeah. line and it's giving. And um, I think it's one of those things where, like I said, it's karma and, you know, God is good to you and people are good to you. And I just want to hear stories. That's yeah. what gets me through. What would you tell people yeah. to give back as well? Encourage them I to? would I would tell everyone. This is something that I would say give back. Be kind to other people, listen to other people, but one thing I like to tell everyone in a nutshell is always say, I can and I will, because then that will make life a lot easier for everyone to know that. Too many people say, I can't, I'm not worth anything. You're is worth as much as you, what you say you're worth. Yes. I can do it, I will, and it's proven. It's a proven fact that that's what's gonna happen. And uh, you know, so just say, I can, I will, and I'll tell you what, by saying that, it'll make the world a better, safer place, happy people around the world, mm -hmm. instead of people that are bitter and they want. You know, I say, you give, and you give, because we'll come back. Definitely. People fill my emotional bank account. So I ain't worried about that. <laughs> you know, I'm not worried about that for you either. Listen, thank, thank you. you so much. We appreciate thank it. We appreciate the message that you continue to send out you. and your strength in the Lord that continues oh, to you. guide you every single day. Thank so thank you, you so very much. much. Thank you so much. All I appreciate right. it. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.